Um, let me just say first that um, I do not make movies for kids. Um, in fact, every single time movies for kids are mentioned, I always think of color, of pop, of saturation, and of laughter. Everything I did not want associated with my career. Um, I find, I consider myself a very dark director. I love emotionally dark movies. And so I don't ever want to make a kid's movie. Hi, my name is Likaro and I'm a filmmaker from Nairobi, Kenya. And I'd like to talk to you about how I made a kid's movie. Um, so seven years ago, I was in the industry in Nairobi. I was working in TV as a TV director. And we were making TV movies. And they were not fulfilling at all for me because, well, you know TV movies. There's only one way to do them. It's either the executive producer's way or the highway. Uh, and after directing about nine films, I decided to quit and because I wanted to make movies for myself. And the first question I wanted to do was to find out what will be my first feature film. What will I tackle? What will I talk about? And as a writer, there are two things you either talk about in your movies. You either write about what you love or you write about what you hate. And I decided I want to write about what I love. And I love my family, I love comic books, and I love making movies. And so I wrote a story, then I'm going to share the synopsis for you guys right now. The synopsis at that time was, a mother's mental state is shaken when she finds out that her nine-year-old son is diagnosed with terminal illness. That was the original story. The story was about my life growing up in Nairobi, but mainly it was about my mother and the mental issues she went through, raising four kids by herself. And I wanted to delve deep about the first day I saw my mother cry. And it's a day that I remember to date. And I really wanted to tell what she was going through, trying to raise us and everything that happened in our lives. Four years later, I was approached by a company called One Fine Day Films, which is run by the legend that is Tom Tikva and another company called Ginger Inc. Films, and they said, we want you to tell your story. At the time, I was known for making short films in my country. Uh, I was not known for any feature film at all. And this one short film that I did went to Cannes Film Festival 2016, and that's when one of my producers uh, watched it. And when they told me, what story do you want to tell? There's only one. And it was a story I had in my, in my laptop in the farthest corner in the documents that we rarely ever go to. And so I pulled it up and I did the treatment and I shared it with them and they said no. And mainly because they were wondering why I want to make a superhero film with no budget. And so I decided not to you know, take any offense and I went back to the drawing board. I did a short film made that treatment, and I went back to them, and I said, do you get it now? And they watched it, and they were like, yeah, we get it. Now, give us a script. And so for the next three months, we worked on a script with my writing partner called Mugambi Tiga. And finally, we had a full-on script, and we presented it to the producers, and we were like, it's perfection. <laughs> this is the most perfect script ever. It talks about adult issues, it is dark, it is emotionally violent, and it is depressing. <laughs> the makings of every great director out there. At the time, there was no great director I could imagine that has made a kid's film. For me, Yasujira Ozu, <laughs> uh, Akira Kurosawa, all of them. And so when we presented this masterpiece of a script to my producers, uh, about two weeks later, we got on a Skype call, and no one talked for two minutes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, two minutes on a Skype call is long. <laughs> it is like a minute in theater of silence. And so we sat there for two minutes with my writing partner, wondering why the silence was there. And the first words that came on were, no. <laughs> and I asked my producers, what do you mean? This is a story you asked for. This is what was in my mind. This was my vision. This is my personal story. What do you mean, no? And they said, no. It's safe. It's dark. It's depressing. We have seen this before. <laughs> we need something unique. 
I was like, what do you want? And they're like, we don't know. But we know you can do better. Producers are the worst. <laughs> and so that night, uh, we, we, we sat there with my, my writing partner, depressed, wondering what to do next. This script that we had presented was every single idea we had. It was a collection of our life experiences put together, and someone says no to it. And so a few weeks later, we, we got the opportunity to go to a counseling session uh, for a, um, a cancer facility called Faraja that offers counseling to parents whose kids are going through terminal illness. And for me, I went there as a formality because I knew the story I was telling was about mental issues, not about terminal illness. And so I decided, you know, even my writing partner didn't come with me. I was like, you just stay. I will go through the ropes and I will come back with data and we can analyze. At that point, we had already given up on making this movie. And so when we went to the counseling session, in the morning session we had um, about 15 to 20 parents seated in a room talking about their experiences of how their kids are going through this terrible thing. And as expected, it was dark and it was depressing and it was really, really sad and hard on me. Because, ladies and gentlemen, for you guys, probably here in Europe, you are more educated about cancer, but the sad fact is in most African countries, cancer is still considered a Western disease. And a lot of people who are going through this are put under a stigma, <laughs> under a stigma in a way, and set aside. And these parents were talking about how their mental state is in disarray, how religion is trying to fight the notion of uh, dealing with cancer and, and, and trying to treat it, and how religion is just trying to put it aside and pray for it. And I was like, this is it. This is a movie that I gave my producers. And as my arrogant self was beating my chest, I was like, I am going to show the producers proof that my movie works. We have a parent in tears going through something. And I was like, done, I have my data. And as I was leaving, the counselor said, would you like to go see the kids? I was like, okay. <laughs> um, I survived one depressing session. I think I can survive another one. I was like, I'll just stay an hour and I will leave. I have all the proof I, I need. And so in the afternoon, we went down to a hospital called Kenyatta National Hospital, which is initials K and H. And it is the largest hospital in Nairobi that caters to majority of uh, public health. And we went to a particular ward called Ward 1E. And Ward 1 is a ward that has kids with terminal illness. And as we walked in, in the back of my mind, I was like, this is going to be tough on us. Because if the morning session with the parents was dark and depressing, I cannot fathom how dark it's going to be with these kids. And we walked down the aisle, uh, at the corridor to the room, and our counselor said, there's only one rule in this room, don't cry. I was like, okay, we shall try. And we walked in and I couldn't believe my eyes. It was the brightest room I had ever seen. It was a room full of color, full of pop, full of saturation and full of laughter. And this really took me by surprise. I was like, don't these kids know what they're going through? And one of the counselors looked at me and said, you know, maybe you should pay more attention to them. And so one child who I shall name John out of respect for him, took my hand, introduced himself, he's nine years old, and he decided to give me a tour of the room. And he showed me all the beds, with the dolls and the color and, the, and all the toys that they had. And we passed by one bed and the bed was empty. And uh, I did not want to talk about it at the time, but he's the one who brought it up. And he's like, my friend used to be in that bed, but he went for medication and did not come back. And I was like, how does that make you feel? And he said, makes me feel sad, but I'm not sad that much because I know I'll have a new friend in that bed. <sighs> This child <laughs> is teaching a grown man about life. And later on, we talked with these kids. We spent the full day with them, the whole afternoon. 
And we played a game, and the game was simple. To write down three things that you want, put them on a piece of paper, and they shall be read out loud later on, anonymously. And we all got into writing, and I looked at John, and I asked him, could I see what is in your paper? Reluctantly, he said, okay, but don't share. I was like, okay. Uh, he told me not to share with the group. I asked for permission later to share it with my other friends, and he said yes. And in his piece of paper, there were three things. One was he wanted a helicopter. He wanted chapati, which is one of the best food dishes in Nairobi. And he wanted his mom to be happy. And the third thing was the one that caught my attention. I was like, what do you mean? And this young boy told me that he doesn't understand why his mother is sad. And told me he's not dead yet. So why is his mom already crying every night? And that's when I got something in my heart, that this was the story I needed to tell. Because ladies and gentlemen, what you don't understand is that these kids are mature in their minds. He's a nine-year-old boy who understands more about life than me. And I talked to the counselor later, and they told me that in, when a child is diagnosed with terminal illness, the first thing they have to tell them is they have to define what death is. And then after, they have to tell them that there is a high probability that you will die. So these kids know full well what they're going through. But what confused me is, why are they so happy? My ignorant self couldn't understand it. But, this, but John taught me a, high, a bigger lesson, and the lesson was that to concentrate on life more than to concentrate on death. These kids live their life. They don't live their death. And in my ignorant self, I, I looked back on the script I was telling, and it was all off. My adult mind was locked. As adults, we all consider the darkness in the world. We never consider the light. Look at our news, look at our social media, look at the world today, pure darkness. And here was a child who knew exactly how to fix the world, and everyone ignored him. But I said, I will not ignore this child. And we talked a bit more, and later on, he told me his mom is, co is coming, and I said, I'm gonna wait for your mom. I need to see the mother of this lovely child. And the mom brought um, a DVD, and all the kids huddled up. The mom got remarried, and because John couldn't make it to the wedding, she brought the wedding tape to him. And that was the movie of the day. We all sat down to watch a wedding, and it was the best movie I had ever seen. Not because of what was on the images, but the community behind it. These kids had found a way to work together and to live together as a community. They were each other's friends, each other's parents, each other's guardians. Something lacking in all the rest of the world. These kids had formed a nation that was perfect in its darkness. And yet no one was telling their story. No one listened to them. That night I cried. I cried a lot because I was like, I am the most ignorant filmmaker ever. And at the, uh, I remember calling my, my writer and telling him, I, I, I don't want to make this movie because then I'm telling the wrong movie. But in the morning, I woke up with a new resolve, and I knew exactly what I wanted to tell. And I wanted to tell the story of these kids and what they're going through. You see, in kids' films, like I said before, full of color, full of pop, full of saturation, and full of laughter, we ignore one simple fact and that is depth. We, Disney has flooded our industry, kids' films, with films that do not tackle issues that we think kids can handle. But kids can handle the serious stuff more than you. Because as adults, we are locked. And so I called my producers up and I told them, I have a story. If you give me three months, I'll deliver a script. And I assure you, this one, you will not say no. And so we delivered a script a few months later, and we gave it to the producers, and we had another Skype call. <laughs> this time, the silence only lasted 30 seconds. Remember, producers, they're the worst. 
And after 30 seconds, the one thing I had over the, <laughs> over the phone was, are you sure? And I said, yes. And they were like, done. Let's make this movie. And over the next um, three months, we made this film, developed it with um, some fantastic mentors from Germany, courtesy of One Fine Day Films. But then things started to happen inside me. I started to question, the adult in me started to question, what are you doing, Licario? Like I mentioned before, no great filmmaker has ever started with kids' films. We do not associate great filmmakers with kids' films. And the doubt really, really affected me because not only was I making a kids' film, but I was making an African film. Those are two disabilities as a filmmaker, being African and making a kids' film. Because neither of those are taken seriously in the industry right now. But throughout, I decided I'm going to cast it aside and I'm going to make the film. After three months, we finished the film. And after six months, we finished editing the film. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to play you the trailer for the film. Lakini utamwambia nini? Unaje anafaa kujua. Kile tu anafaa kujua saa hii anafaa kukwa nyumbani. Sawa? Unaza nini lakini ndio? Hiyo hiki kinafaa kwenda kwa mganga. Manzi na itaji pa wazako. Joan in special. She's a little superhero. She's a little girl. No, not to find a kid. Rule number one, see and be a mom. Joe, do something. There's no harm in a little pretending. Muno taki kumando kweli. Mama kena ni wewe. What is your mission? To save them all so I can finally fly. So that is a film that we made, and I'd like to read you the synopsis for the new film. The synopsis reads, um, a nine-year-old girl diagnosed with terminal illness has two months to live and dreams of being a superhero. The, her family and the entire community decide to make this happen, whatever the, the cost. So we finished the film. We had it ready-made. Then we had this biggest problem. Where do we take it? <laughs> Remember when I said kids' films, no one considers them as worthy of digestion, worthy of dissecting. And I'd like to share the results of <laughs> a year-long um, distribution network, courtesy of Rush Lake Media, of how far this film has gone. The film was fortunate enough to premiere at the Balinale Film Festival 2018, where it won the best, the special mention jury award, Later on, it went to the Toronto International Film Kids section, where it won the Audience Award. And as of last week, a full year and a half later, we have won 58 awards from different festivals, with a further 20 nominations. And we were Kenya's official Oscar submission, and also won the ECFA Award for 2018. All this from a kids' film. Never in the history of my existence did I ever think that my entire career would be built by a kid's film. But it happened, and I'm so glad we got to make this film. I am so glad that we got to make a kid's film, because without it, we wouldn't start the discussions that we have started in my country and in countries around the world. The film has screened in every single continent, in the world, with the exception of Antarctica. And I'm sure my distributor, Philip Hoffman, over there is busy working on that. 
uh, because we all love the bragging rights. But then we had a problem. The film was winning awards in Europe, left, right, and center. But how would a Kenyan audience digest this film? We do not have a distribution network in Kenya at the moment. We only have 20 cinemas to cater for the entire country, three quarters of which are, considered, uh, are located in one location in Nairobi. And we were so, so worried because up until three years ago, we only used to have one feature film every three to four years. And they were all made by one fine day films. And so we were worried when we took the premiere to Nairobi. But ladies and gentlemen, I can gladly say that the film was um, sold out every single seat for 12 weeks. And we have brought it back yet again to the cinemas. And again, they are full. This film has taught me the hunger that the audience have, not for any specific film, but a film that caters to human emotion. There is depth in kids' films that a lot of us are ignorant about and that I hope to highlight during the course of my entire career. Some of the cases that we had was a father who came up to me at the airport in Dubai while I was going to Nairobi, and he, had, he was one of the hostesses in the airline I was going with. And he pointed at me and was like, are you Likarion? Yes. I am a, he told me his name, he's from Nairobi as well. And he watched the movie with his daughter. This man had lost his wife and was raising the daughter by himself. And when they watched the movie, he was scared when he came to the parts of death. Later on, he told me that evening they had a two hour conversation with his daughter about death. And he was blown away at just how ignorant he was towards his own daughter when it comes to dealing with heavy issues. Kids' films can have color, they can have pop, they can have saturation, and they can have laughter. But also they can have serious topics to address. And after we premiered the film in Nairobi, we took it round to Kenyatta National Hospital. For me, that was the ultimate uh, audience. Because we made a film for kids, but also it's difficult to find a balance for both adults and for kids. And I remember telling my, my producer that if these kids that we made the film for do not like this movie, I do not care about any single award that I've won. I do not care about the critics. It will be a bad film. It is to me if they don't like it. And so we went back to Kenyatta National Hospital. Originally, we wanted to screen it for the 18 kids that were in the ward. Uh, but we had about eight floors of patients streaming in and orderlies, and doctors, and nurses. We couldn't feel, we couldn't uh, feed them all, so we all stood in the corners, in the windows, and we watched this film. And at the end of it, again, I cried. I'm not emotional, but I cried. Because these kids loved the film. They said they saw themselves in it, and they saw each other in it. The movie is called Supermodo, which roughly translates into superhuman, superman, superwoman. And these kids, all of them, saw themselves as supermodel. And I asked where John was, and unfortunately John passed on six months after I saw him, while we were still editing the film. And the kids noticed my reaction when I heard that, and they told me, don't worry, he's watched the film. <laughs> and we have new kids to go tell this story to. These kids, long after I've made the film, are still teaching this old man about life. That is the power of kids' cinema. As we speak, it's been a full year and a half. We've taken the film to kids around hospitals. The film is being used as a counseling tool to start conversations with parents and kids about terminal illness and how to deal with it. We have screened the movie in over 70 film festivals. We've had theatrical runs in over six countries, and I'm told just now that it's going to be in Poland very soon in a theatrical run. So thank you so much for that. And But that is a power of kids' cinema. What we need to realize as adults is that it's not our job to build the industry. It is our job to lay the foundation. And this, the new revolution of cinema will not be built by adults. It will be built by kids. And if we do not solidify the systems in place now, we will have no cinema. So whether you're a filmmaker, a producer, you're the best. <laughs> uh, 
a distributor, someone who funds the films, I urge you to concentrate more on kids' films that have color, that have pop, that have saturation, that have laughter, but also films that tackle issues that no one else wants to talk about. That is a space that we have been given when it comes to kids' cinema. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Likara Unanaina. I do not make movies for kids, but every single day, I find myself drawn to telling kids' movies. Thank you so much.